Hey, Frog, you in there? Hello, Frog. Come on. Hello. Man, you're getting fatter every day. <laughs> well, let me have a seat here. <sighs> Where to start? Me and uh, my friend John have been talking on the phone, and we've been talking about this subject a lot. Uh, our world. You have two types of people. Well, maybe three. You have those that are aware that our world is rapidly changing and descending into uh, chaos and decay. That, and they go overboard with it. They, they're convinced that there's tunnels under Walmart and... Uh, you know, the elite are going to live there and they're going to kill us in the empty Walmarts and Alex Jones is their chef. I, I mean, it just... You, you just got to shake your head sometimes when you read some of the stuff Dabu7 uh, puts on his uh, YouTube channel and the people that believe it. Uh, one of them just the other day was uh, a truck at a truck stop with uh, containers on it that were marked explosive. It was a civilian truck and it's absolutely nothing out of the ordinary and I can tell you this firsthand because I hauled that stuff. Uh, there's companies that are devoted to nothing but hauling explosives and ordnance and hazardous materials for the military. Uh, I did that for a while, my wife and I both. And every day in every state on every highway there are civilian contractors hauling military goods there's nothing abnormal about it nothing out of the ordinary and yet these people are sending in pictures and video clips of equipment going down the road on the backs of trucks at no larger an, an amount than than there ever has been and then you have the people that are completely oblivious to anything beyond their game console and then you have people like myself who recognize that there is something happening Jade Helm is I think suspicious uh, I don't know what they're they're doing when I was in the army we didn't train among civilians uh, we didn't we didn't train off our military uh, compounds I don't know what's going on with Jade Helm but I'm not an alarmist and I'm not freaking out about it. I just find it very curious, and I'm paying attention to you know information that does come out. That, and unfortunately, you have to sift through the Dabu Sevens and uh, shake out the nonsense like that to get any kind of uh, any kind of information at all. So you have the mainstream media that's not even talking about it, and you have the Dabu Seven types who are convinced that uh, there's tunnels under the WalMarts. I mean, you know somewhere there's information that you can use but you have to be very very diligent about extracting it from the BS so that being said and uh, you would have to be a complete fool to not realize that something is wrong with our country and I feel it in my bones that we're not going to be continuing life as normal for very long. I don't know what, there's so many possibilities. One is hyperinflation, which I think is a very real possibility. They cannot continue to print money. They cannot continue to raise our debt unabated. It doesn't work like that. So something's, something's going to give somewhere. And now we're poking Russia in the eye over Ukraine. We're we're uh, we're hassling China over building islands in the China Sea. Uh, you know we could have a war. It could result in a war. That's just one more possibility. I mean, there's dozens and dozens of things that we are on the precipice of, on the verge of. So. I'm not going to stop talking about preparedness. You know, a lot of people backed away from it. 
thanks to Doomsday Preppers. Uh, you know, making people look kind of foolish. Not everybody, but most... I have a friend that was on Doomsday Preppers, and they did a nice job of uh, conveying how he felt and what he thought. And they didn't make him look silly, but they have really found some of the silliest out there kind of preppers and, and put them on that channel. So consequently, everybody who talks about prepping is that kind of a nut. And uh, I'm not going to be afraid of that anymore. If people want to call me a nut, I'm okay with that. Who knows? Maybe I am. So, what I want to tell you about is cooking. That's what I'm talking about today. If your electricity goes off or hyperinflation happens and you can't afford electricity, you have to be able to cook. You have to be able to heat water. You have to be able to bathe. I mean, you can bathe in cold water. But if you didn't have an electric or gas stove, what would you cook on? The bottom line is, fire is available to everyone, and it's virtually costs nothing. Besides the effort it takes to gather the wood, and the cost of a you know maybe a pick lighter. So the very the very bottom is cooking on a fire, and then you would have rocket stoves, and you know if you have some stored propane like I do, you could cook on propane stoves, but that's going to run out. So what I'm doing is trying to perfect a kitchen that I can use all my fire-driven cooking devices like my Silver Fire Rocket Stove there and my Silver Fire Scout. And uh, I hope to get a Hunter soon. And I am going to put my propane stove out here too because I do have, I think, at least a couple of years worth of propane. And uh, which brings me to another thing. I'm going to be doing a test. Nobody's done that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a 20-pound tank, hook it up to my burner, my grill. Not my grill, but my, uh, uh, let's see, my burner over there. That that pot is on. I'm going to light that burner, and I'm going to see how long that 20-pound tank will last. And I'll let you know. I'm going to do that to a one pound tank too. It's just be good information to have and I've never done it before and uh, I, I want to know and when I find out I'll tell you. So anyway, I'm working on my my uh, outdoor kitchen here and uh, I found a junkyard. Of all things, the junkyard has cinder blocks and uh, I was prepared to go to Lowe's and pay $1.43 for each cinder block and I drove by this junkyard. It's well, down yonder on Highway 164. It doesn't have a sign out. And I've always wondered what exactly they did there. So, yesterday, I pulled in there, and there was no office. But there's three houses in there, and I just knocked on somebody's door. And a lady gave me a, a card with her husband's number on it, and I called him. And he said, yeah, there used to be a salvage yard, but uh, they don't really do it anymore because they don't have the insurance for it. And But uh, asked me what I wanted, and I said, well, I've seen them cinder blocks out there, and... I, you know, I'm i going to buy some, and I was wondering if you'd sell any of them. He goes, sure, take a buck a block. A buck a block, and these are 16 by 16 inch blocks. So basically, these are two blocks, you know, and they're heavy. So this is what I'm going to use to build my outdoor kitchen, and I'm fixing to unload them and uh, start setting it up. Here's a little odd thing to happen and I've had this trailer 16 years and this tailgate has never ever come out of here when I got to the junkyard this morning I got out I was missing my tailgate I could not believe it so I loaded up my blocks and on the way back I looked real careful along the side of the road and sure enough I found it off in the woods I don't know how it came out of there but it did I'm glad I found it all right I'm fixing to get started I'm getting there. That is where the silver fire is going to sit. And this is going to be level, so when I don't want to use the oven, I just pull the silver fire out onto this one and cook on my dragon pot. Phew! I've only pinched my hand uh, a couple of dozen times. 
That's gonna hurt. These are uh, about 70 pounds a piece. Maybe more. Might be 80. <laughs> they're uh, 16 by 16 blocks is what they are. And their cinder block is about 35, sometimes 40 pounds. But anyway, they're heavy. Especially when you're uh, getting older. Heavy things are heavier when you get older. Okay, a few more. I, I may have to go back and get five more, but that's okay. Uh, i probably get them today. Almost done. We're getting there. I got to put them three across the top. And I got four more blocks to put right where those are. And then one more uh, capstone, I guess you'd call it. And then I got to put my metal across the top of that. And then put my oven on it. And then put my bricks around that. And uh, I'll be back to... I'll have a big kitchen with... Uh, plenty of concrete surface space that I can actually use wood wood to cook with I wish it wasn't so dark in here and you know it's it's a white ceiling it's sunny as heck out it's just uh, I don't know why it's so dark Man, we got a menagerie. We have a zoo here. I uh, wish I could back up far enough away to get a good look at it. Let me... I can give you an angled look at it. I'm up against my wall of my house now. Okay, I got a couple more things to do. What I... I have uh, my two-burner propane stove that I'm going to put over here. But before I can do that, I got to take it apart and put the inlet where the gas goes on this side of it because right now it's on that side of it and I want to put the propane tank down here okay uh, now I got a place if I ever get a hunter I got a place for the hunter I have a place for my my scout and I got my silver fire rocket stove right there and when I want to cook on it I can just pull it out to here I like it. I'm not done, but I'm going to go ahead and put this video up. i got a couple of more minor things to do. One of them is uh, uh, switch the uh, gas line on that stove around. And then uh, where the stove is, is where I'm going to put my sink down on that end. And plumb it and hook it up. And I think what I'm going to do is put a drain. The sink is going there. I'm going to drain it out. And see this little concrete ditch right here? It goes right up here. I think I'm just going to drain it into that ditch. And it goes underneath my sidewalk here. And it drains out down that way. So, uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And, uh, right now I'm, right now I'm talking about cooking. What you're going to cook on. How you going to cook. I've done a lot about water. I am severely lacking in lighting. I do have 15 gallons of uh, lamp oil. I have batteries for my flashlights, but all that's gonna gonna play out eventually. So I need to get solar, and I'm working on it. And uh, the one one more thing I want to get for my outdoor kitchen here is I either want to build a smaller solar oven than the one I built before, which was a monstrosity. Or, uh, or just buy one because uh, you know like this rocket stove I, I can make them pretty good but I can't make them this good and it's going to be the same thing with a solar oven I, I can make one but it's not going to be as good as one I could buy that's made you know specifically for solar cooking so anyway that's my wife mowing that's right. You should have mowed the yard before. You shouldn't have let it get that tall. You don't think she can read lips, do you? Thanks for watching, y'all.